On the morning of Tuesday, November 26, 1963, all regularly scheduled TV and radio programming resumed in the U.S. President Johnson issued NSAM-273, a modification of the American policy in Vietnam. Included in President Kennedy's original memo was Johnson adding the word WIN to the U.S. objective. At the same time, the American satellite Explorer 18 was launched to study the magnetic field around the moon. Jack Ruby was indicted for the murder of Lee Harvey Oswald. He was found guilty on March 14, 1964. Although a court demanded a retrial in 1966, Ruby died of lung cancer on January 3, 1967. The Federal Reserve Bank began the removal of silver certificates from circulation, starting with the discontinuation of $1 notes. Big Butte School in Butte, Montana, became the first of almost 1,000 schools to be renamed in honor of President Kennedy. And on Wednesday, November 27th, Lyndon Johnson gave his first speech as President of the United States. It has since become known as Let Us Continue. Mr. Speaker, Mr. President, members of the House, members of the Senate, my fellow Americans, all I have, I would have given gladly not to be standing here today. The greatest leader of our time has been struck down by the foulest deed of our time. Today, John Fitzgerald Kennedy lives on in the immortal words and works that he left behind. He lives on in the mind and memories of mankind. He lives on in the hearts of his countrymen. No words are sad enough to express our sense of loss. No words are strong enough to express our determination to continue the forward thrust of America that he began. The dream of conquering the vastness of space, the dream of partnership across the Atlantic and across the Pacific as well, the dream of a Peace Corps in less developed nations, the dream of education for all of our children, the dream of jobs for all who seek them and need them, the dream of care for our elderly, the dream of an all-out attack on mental illness, and above all, the dream of equal rights for all Americans, whatever their race or color. These and other American dreams have been vitalized by his drive and by his dedication. And now the ideas and the ideals which he so nobly represented must and will be translated into effective action. This nation will keep its commitments from South Vietnam to West Berlin. We will be unceasing in the search for peace, resourceful in our pursuit of areas of agreement 
even with those with whom we differ, and generous and loyal to those who join with us in common cause. From this chamber of representative government, let all the world know and none misunderstand that I rededicate this government to the unswerving support of the United Nations. to the honorable and determined execution of our commitments to our allies. <laughs> to the reinforcement of our programs of mutual assistance and cooperation in Asia and Africa. and to our Alliance for Progress in this hemisphere. John Kennedy's death commands what his life conveyed, that America must move forward. Americans of all races and creeds and political beliefs to understand and to respect one another. So let us put an end to the teaching and the preaching of hate and evil and violence. from the fanatics of the far left and the far right, from the apostles of bitterness and bigotry, from those defiant of law and those who pour venom into our nation's bloodstream. that the tragedy and the torment of these terrible days will bind us together in new fellowship, making us one people in our hour of sorrow. So let us here highly resolve that John Fitzgerald Kennedy did not live or die in vain. Thanksgiving Eve, as we gather together to ask the Lord's blessing and give him our thanks, let us unite in those familiar and cherished words, America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea.
next day, November 28th, was Thanksgiving. President Johnson issued an executive order renaming Cape Canaveral in Florida to Cape Kennedy. The holiday season, albeit the most subdued one the people of the U.S. had since 1944, had begun. On the November 25th broadcast of the Gene Shepard Show, Shep wondered how people would still be feeling 30 days after the assassination. Well, Tuesday, December 24th was Christmas Eve, and that day the New York International Airport, commonly referred to as Idlewild, was officially renamed as John F. Kennedy International Airport, popularly referred to as JFK. That night, Gene Shepard took to the air, telling a story about a Christmas season in the days of yore. As a retired radio Santa Claus, I, uh, every year about this same time, Walt, I get the old urge of the retired radio Santa Claus to get that, that gurgly sound in your voice, you know, like... <laughs> Yeah, it's a funny business, but you know, speaking of, uh, isn't it a great night out? And it really is great out. I'll tell you, it, you hear all these guys yelling about the weather all day long on the radio. We got about 10 of them on the station, you know, talking about the weather incessantly on the air. And you never once hear a guy say, wow, what a gas. And now the news, you know. <laughs> I mean, it just, it's never, it's so impersonal as to be ridiculous. The other night, when it was just beginning to snow, I dialed uh, weather, you know, on the uh, telephone thing, and there is this great Brooklyn weather girl. I'll tell you, I, I enjoyed her a lot more than any weather girls you ever hear on television. The Central Park temperature is now 70, you know, that kind of thing. They've got this beautiful sound that you'll never hear anywhere else. Have you ever heard the Chicago weather girl? Oh, sure, you know, they've got these weather girls. You know, the telephone company has this thing. And, and wherever you go, in whatever city it is, dial this number, whatever number they have. It's always, I think it's, it, may, it may be the same number across the country. You, well, I know what it is here, yeah. But you generally get a pure distillate of the local culture when you dial those girls because nothing makes a telephone number because they apparently just pick them at random I don't know do they audition these girls do they cover various sections of Manhattan and Queens and the Bronx one day they have a lady from the Bronx so she sounds a little different from the Brooklyn gal you know you know to give fair play to give it fair uh, cross-section but oh boy was there a dilly of a Brooklyn a pure Brooklyn she sounded like you know these women that used to do all kinds of Brooklyn accents on the radio when they had, you remember shows with Milton Berle, there was always somebody saying, what are you talking about? You know, that kind of thing. Well, this lady the other night says, the Central Park temperature is 29 degrees. The barometer is rising, and <laughs> it's fantastic. You know, I listened to that. It was one of the greatest comedy routines I've heard in years, and all she was doing was the weather. And she had that slightly querulous sound in her voice that Arthur Colber, isn't it Arthur Colber, the guy that does the great, used to do the great pieces in New York, still does once in a while, Bella. You remember Bella? It sounds, you always have a feeling that she's, that the lady who's doing these things is out of an Arthur Colber story. That's where she works. The temperature is <laughs> slightly irritating. And you drop dead. You know, that kind of thing. Thank you. And now the weather. It's, it goes click. The 1 a.m. Central Park temperature reading. 1 a.m. Central Park temperature reading. 1 a.m. She gets hung up a little bit once in a while. The tape gets balled up. Did you ever call weather and get a busy signal? Sure. I have done that when everyone in town. Of course, the New Yorkers panic quickly. And uh, they want to make sure that when they look out of the window, that you know, when it's raining or snowing, or the temperature is like 20, they want to make sure it's official. So they call up to find out if it's really snowing, you know, or really rain. They don't believe, nobody believes the senses here in town. But uh, it is a great night, I'll tell you. I, uh, I always go out looking around at the, at the Christmas world just before Christmas. And uh, I, to me, there is no place that makes Christmas better, that makes the scene more completely than the dime stores. 
Uh, maybe this goes back to my lower nothing class youthhood in which uh, whenever the whenever the you know the christmas shopping store the kid goes out the christmas shop he immediately goes to the dime store that where else you know you don't go to bond with teller when you're on a 40 cent budget for the entire thing you know <laughs> that covers six people well uh, you know so so i would immediately go to the dime store woolworth you see we had two or three big dime stores in town that competed there was woolworth there was kresge's which was a uh, dime store too and uh, let's see, there was Kresge's, Woolworth, and what was the other one? There was another one. Not J.C. Penney. No, there was another dime store that was around. You don't see that one anymore. But Kresge's and Woolworth were my big areas of dealing. And I had my eye on a thing one time. I remember buying... Do you remember any stuff you ever bought for your parents when you were a kid? It's embarrassing now when you think about it. But I, I'll tell you what I did one Christmas and... Uh, I didn't intend to tell the story, but I might as well. But I was figuring, you see, for about a month or so before Christmas, I was always going into the dime store and looking the scene over, you know, figuring out what the what would make it and what I could make and what you know what would really make what would really make the house complete, you know. It really somehow it would make my it would make my mother's life sing, that sort of thing. So <laughs> I saw this. I saw this. 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 Uh, this. Perfume atomizer. Uh, it was a silver one. It was glass, but it had silver inside of it. You see, it was vaguely frosted on the outside. And now that I think back on it, it must have been one of the worst looking things that Woolworth ever handled. It had a rubber bulb on it that was sort of jonquil yellow. And it, <laughs> and it squeaked when you squeezed it, which I thought made, it showed that it was good, you know, it, it made a, a when we're, you know, like a little mouse, one of those rubber mice, when you squeeze it, it made a squeaky sound, ow, ow, when you squeeze it, well, that, that shows it really has a lot of suction and a lot of power, <laughs> it really blows a lot of perfume off. Well, well, I kept going past and looking at this thing, and this was about, oh, maybe about two or three weeks before Christmas, and I, 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 you, I had a debate a lot, you know, because it was a tremendous investment. It was a full quarter. And, uh, yeah, it was going all the way. It was a quarter. And they had other, they had other atomizers there for 15 cents. They had a couple of them for 20 cents. And I was looking at the high price line on, on the middle shelf there, the 25 cent atomizers. And they had some red ones and they had a, they had a blue one. Let me tell you, that would make your eyeballs sweat just to look at it. It was so blue. I don't, I don't know where they got the blue. But even at that age, you know, I could see that was a rotten color. But somehow the silver one with the yellow bulb and it had a yellow, <laughs> it had a yellow hose on the side of it. And the top was, was imitation gold. Well, at the time, of course, I just called it gold. It had a gold top, and I kept looking at this thing. And finally, I decided, well, okay, and I'm in town with my brother, and, you know, my mother and father are gone off. So then I, now, look, we'll meet in front of Minus's. Now, you be there immediately, and I don't get don't get lost, don't get hung up, because we do not want to have to go scrubbing around through the dime store looking for you kids. Now, at exactly 8 o'clock, now, you can see when the big hand is pointing, and, and now, you, you be here at 8 o'clock in front of Minus's. Now, you hear? Okay. So we go off, we split, and Randall's got a full 30 cents to spend. Since I was older, I had something like 45. I was going all the way out, and uh, I'm down there, and immediately I make a beeline for the counter where they sell the cosmetics and all the false eyelashes. You ought to see the Woolworth false eyelashes. They're great. I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, they've got them, you know. So, so I'm, I'm looking around, and I'm, I'm, I have to make one last survey of the scene to make sure that I that is really what I want to get. So I go looking over the scene. I look back and forth, and finally, okay, I'm going to pop. So I go up to this lady that is in charge of the atomizer section there, and there's about five million people shopping in the dime store, of course. Hey, oh, they were snacked up like cordwood. You can't even, you know, how, you know what a mess it is trying to get weighted on. Even when you're grown up, you, you can yell back. 
It's it's very hard, but a little kid, you know. So, I, so it took me about 40 minutes to get this chick, you know, to decide I really wanted to buy one of these things. And she says, okay, all right, all right, here. And she takes it down and she wraps it all up and says, you want it wrapped? Yeah, yeah, you know, they, they gift wrap, believe it or not. And they, uh, yeah, the dive are, I don't know, do they still? I doubt whether they still do. They had a gift wrap department, so I go down and I get this thing gift wrapped. And boy, oh boy, it was fantastic. Absolutely incredible. I mean, I was really knocked out of my skull with this thing because, you know, it was the biggest, it was the biggest gift I, I could ever remember buying my mother. You know, it was a big thing. So I take the thing all the way home. You know, we're sitting in the back seat of the Graham Page, and I got this thing stuck under my sheepskin coat where nobody can tell what I've got. Oh, no, no, it's a secret now. And, of course, my mother always says, did you do any shopping? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> she says, well, what did you buy? And Randy is going, ah, 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 you know, he's going, and I'll shut up. It's a secret. Well, of course, it's a fantastic secret what I've got for everybody. <laughs> I got this. I got this giant plastic lotto game for my kid brother, you know, <laughs> which he cared for like a shot in the head. <laughs> lotto. I never knew a kid that cared a nickel for lotto, but they always get gifts of lotto sets. And so I, I got a lotto set for him, and I got for my father a shaving brush. It was the only shaving brush I knew that molted. It, uh, this thing was, yeah, it had, it had a yearly, it, it was a 12 cent shaving brush, and it, it went through a, an actual molting period. I want to tell you what happened the first time he stuck it in the hot water. Oh, oh boy. But that, <laughs> that's another point. But anyway, the, the whole big thing, of course, was the atomizer. That was the big, big scene that I was going at. So I got this atomizer, and, and, and I could hardly wait. You know, you always, you always want to show it to somebody. I got to show, hey, Ma, I bet you can't guess what I got. And she's saying, well, now, I, su I thought it was supposed to be a surprise. I don't want to know. Well, I, yeah, that's right. That's a surprise. <laughs> I bet you can't guess, though, boy. And she'd say, well, what did you get? A fielder's mitt? Oh, come on, Ma, I don't want a fielder's mitt. No, I bet you can't guess. Really, it's, it's uh, uh, first of all, I'll tell you, it's, uh, it's little. It's a little package. It's very little. You'll probably think it's not much, but it's because it's so little, see? But you'll be surprised because it's fantastic. It's very little package. And she'd say, well, let's see, a diamond ring? Oh, come on, Ma, no, it's it's not that little. It's bigger than that, see? Here, I'll go get it. I'll show you. You can look at the package. You know, that's, well, anyway, this is building up. This giant scene is building up until finally, of course, Christmas Eve comes, which was when we had our Christmas gifts and all that stuff. So everybody, it's now about 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and uh, we've had supper, and, you know, you're on a, you're very nervous inside, and you're throwing up and everything else, and it's very terrible. And so finally the time comes. And, and at that point, you see, because I had built up this giant thing about the atomizer in my mind, I was really more interested in what she was going to think of the atomizer than I didn't, you know, you didn't, I didn't even think about what I was going to get. You know, it's very strange because you can get really hung. And, and so there it was there. I hit it, you know, put it down here next to the thing. And the tree is there and all that. And uh, I stick it out in front of the big tag, a giant tag on there, you know, to mom, you know, that kind of thing. And, and so she comes and finally they're opening the pre Everybody's opening the presents. I'm looking. Hey, Ma, don't you want to open that? I wonder what that. There's that big one. Look at that. Hey, look at that one. The one over there behind the big. Wow, look, Ma. Well, finally she decides. You know, she's playing it pretty cool apparently, and she's playing it. She's now. Well, I'm not in any hurry. Actually, I'm not in any hurry. I don't. I'm really not in here. You just open yours. Look at this. Isn't this wonderful? A donut cutter. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, Uncle Carl, a donut cutter. Isn't that wonderful with a brass handle? Very good. So she's looking at her stuff. She says, oh, boy, what a wonderful bathrobe. She's looking at her bathrobe. She got all the while. There's this thing laying there. See this? Hey, Ma, Ma, there's one other one there. <laughs> I wonder. So she finally picks it up. She says, well, let's open this one up. Well, she opened it up. Well, have you ever seen those corny takes? Those real corny takes that they do in the Class B movies that Dick Foran is doing all the time, or, you know, the Judy Garland has a, she has a penchant for doing this kind of, thing. oh no, you know, that kind of thing. And my mother says, what? This, this is beautiful. Where did you get all the money to buy? This is just fantastic. She's really playing it. Look at this, look at this. And she holds it up and shows my father. She squeezes it. Ow, ow. It squeezes. He says, what is that? She says, that is, look at that. This is something that I have always wanted. 
I have for years, ever since I was a little kid, I always wanted a perfume atomizer. I used to always look at perfume. She says, look at that. It's, look at that. It's great. And, of course, I'm sitting there, you know, and I'm beaming all over the place, and my ears are red. And she says, isn't that fantastic? Great. And my kid brother's grinning. He, he, you know, held the secret all this time. So I says, hey, Ma, go get some perfume. Put it in. She says, okay, I'll do that. And so she takes her bottle of evening in Paris, which <laughs> she, had, she had received a giant four-gallon bottle of evening, evening, evening in Paris perfume. It's a giant bottle. That's the big one, you know, the one that, <laughs> that she had this big giant bottle. So she pours it. She opens the top. I says, now, you see, here's the way it goes. She says, I know how it works. And she unscrews the top. She takes the top, you know, she takes this giant bottle of evening in Paris and <laughs> she's pouring it in there. She tightens it all up. She says, now, okay, and it goes, ow, ow. Nothing comes out. She says, no, wait, maybe here. She shakes it, ding, 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 ding. She says, ow, ow. Nothing comes out. I said, here, Ma, let me tighten the top. Tighten the top. Ow, ow. My old man says, here, wait a minute, let me get the, let me, here, just let me, let me check it. You know, the fathers are always a fish. You didn't put it in right for crying out loud. What's the matter with you women? He opens the top and he fools around with it a little bit, shakes it, blows it out, puts it back on. He goes, ow, ow. Nothing. Ow, ow. Nothing. My mother says, well, that's all right. She says, it, it probably needs to get broken in. It probably has to get broken in. It'll probably work better tomorrow afternoon. You know, it's Christmas and everybody's excited. It'll probably work better tomorrow afternoon. I'm sitting there under the tree. Work better. It won't work at all. It's terrible. It's rotten. It'll never work. It'll never work. And she says, now, wait a minute. Here, just, just a minute. Now, let's hold this thing. She shakes it again. Oh, oh. Oh, boy, was the Christmas going down the hot air register at that point. You know, it was going down, flying, just dead. My old man takes it again. He goes, ow, ow, ow. He says, let me look at this thing. He goes out in the kitchen, and he takes his pliers, and there was a little nozzle on the front. You know, the, he takes this nozzle, and he opens it up, and he looks through. He says, for crying out loud, it's stuffed up. He takes a toothpick and he's poking it through like that. He's pretending like he's fixing it. So he's pretending. He says, here, it's, it's stuffed up. He's there. He blows through it. He says, now it'll work. And he screws it back on again. Ow, ow, ow. He says, there, it's working. I said, let me see. Let me see. He says, no, it's working. Don't worry about it. It's working. Ow, ow. He says, why don't you get back and play with the sled? It's working. Hey, Ann, it's working now. Ow, ow. Nothing is coming out. And he's hoking it up. Hey, it's working now, Ann. Ow, ow. Oh, what do you mean? It's not working, Dad. It's not working at all. I can tell it's not working at all. Oh, oh. He says, no, yo, go on. Go back. He says, look at it. It's working good. Here, you can smell the perfume. And, of course, the sink smelled of, of evening in Paris from here all the way to Indiana Harbor and back again, you know. Boy, and he holds it up. He says, smell that? I says, yeah. He says, well, now, you see, it's working, isn't it? Yeah. Even I wouldn't admit it. Yeah. My mom says, gee, it's working, isn't it? Yeah. We all agreed it's working. Yeah. All right, all right. That's enough of that. Speaking of the non-working, this is WORAM and FM, New York.